Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this episode of Moon Bats. Today, or this episode, we're going to start in on this foot clutch. We're going to work on the suicide clutch, suicide shift, foot clutch, jockey shift. What is it even called? I don't know. Uh, but we're going to start in on it. Um, we're going to work on this part for now. <laughs> this side. So, let's see how this works, because I don't know what I'm doing. So I took all the screws out of this, um, put it in my little chart here, graph, template, whatever. This thing, a uh, piece of cardboard, so I can not put the screws back in the wrong spots. So let's take this cover off. I took the shifter off as well, it's down here. I'm gonna have to modify that to work later on, but that's, that's the shifter part, so it should be all right. Uh, so here we go. So I've got this off and I'll bring you in close so I can show you how this unhooks and then we'll start messing with all this stuff in here. I'm going to be working over my shoulder here. Um, oh, this isn't even... Oh, look at that. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this paper off, this gasket off, so I can save it because if it bounces around here, it's just going to get torn bad things are going to happen. So I'm going to set it aside, put it aside. I'm just going to put it over there somewhere. It's already got a hole in it. That's a good start. Uh, so this has a little spring right here that holds it in place. That's what makes this come back. And it looks like I'll need to replace this spring. I would have needed, I will need to replace this spring when we work on this in the future. Um, so the first thing is, is I loosened it all up at the lever. So we're just going to take the cable up. Uh, we're going to use our cable loosener upper thing. So there's a bracket in here. I just got to loosen this up, open it up a little bit. There we go. You can see the cable just slides. Cable just slides. It just, come on. It just slides right out. So take it off and then this pulls out. Well, it comes off. It just slides right out of there. So we're just going to it off this way. This just pops right out. So now we have a case we can work with. This can just hang there for now because we're probably, hopefully, never going to need that again. Uh, so here we are. This is the mechanism. Here's how it works. It uh, pulls in and when it pulls in, it turns. I'll show you. Let's see if you can see that. It turns and moves out. So it goes like that. Um, so let's see how we can make that work. It was in this way. This is when the lever pulls it up and it makes this come out, which pushes a bar, which pushes in the clutch and all that good stuff. And that's what makes it engage and disengage. Um, it's pretty dirty right now. So we've got it in the sink. We're just gonna... So it's not, it's not a lot of movement. I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's on your lever. Uh, so what we're going to do is you're going to, you can just, it's just a worm gear like this. Uh, you can see it there. And so the way you tighten it is I'll show you from the other side, how you, how you adjust this clutch. This is what the case looks like from the outside. So you just pop this guy off. So what you do is you tighten the screw in until you feel a bit of tension and then you turn it out back a quarter of an turn and that's what that's what sets the clutch at the clutch level at the clutch at the case and then you tighten this nut down and it acts as a lock nut to hold that screw in place so it doesn't back out. Alright so you can see when we turn that worm gear when your clutch pulls in it goes like that. You can see it. It goes in. I'm pulling as if I was pulling a lever. Whoop, 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 and it goes in. I loosened off this nut so you can see what's going on. The nut, it just backs off, 
and it turns around that. You can see it turning on that, that Phillips head screw. And then we'll back the whole thing, the whole mechanism out a bit. It looks like this. So I think if we make a longer one of these, and we can still use this nut, and then we can extend this, just boop. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an extension to this that I can weld a bracket to, that I can pivot, and that'll turn it for me. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, so I got, I got this piece here. I gotta find something to extend this with. Um, let's see what we got. This is like the random junk pot. There's you know, stuff, hammers. Um, I think this might be the answer here. This is it. I think this is gonna be it. Alright, so I got it. Oh man. I think it's a piece of a sissy bar or something that we just broke off, but I think if you look at it, it's like right at the right size. It's right in there. So it almost like I'll be able to weld around these edges, chamfer it, weld it up, and then extend it. Really, I can, I mean, I can go as far as I want, but I only need to go like, and then what I'll have to do is I'll use the lathe to drill out the middle of this, and then we will thread it on the inside and then make another rod like this that is longer so it just slides right in and it can do the same thing and then I'll, I'll be able to just weld right on top of this right here and just turn it I want it sticking out not very much inch past the case let's see make sure that that's good that gives me room to weld the bar coming straight off and if I have that bar in there, I want to see when I'm turning this, it doesn't ever turn that far. It doesn't go that far, but I want to make sure that it doesn't come in and hit the case when I'm turning it in. So, so I have a bolt here from something. I don't know what it's from, but it's a grade 8 bolt, which is great. <laughs> um, so what I can do is, I'm going to bring you over here, is I can thread, I can hollow this all the way out, all the way through, and then thread this so it can go in, but if I flip it over, I can stick this in the lathe and trim this down here, this grade eight, this, this shaft, uh, I can turn it down so that it's just basically a longer version of this. Uh, so it'll just be... This guy will look like that, which is great because look at all that adjustment I have, and then I can make this as long as I need. I'm just going to keep going until, I don't know, I've got enough. I would just start over if I broke this tap in here, to be honest. Oh. Had to do that. Last time I tried to make something on the lathe, I actually made a spacer for uh, for the iron head. And I ended up, I put it down somewhere, and I never found it. I looked for it for about 30 minutes, and then I just ended up making another one. And I did a big cleanup of the shop pretty recently to get everything ready for winter. I never did find that... Uh, that spacer. So I don't know exactly how long I need to make this before I start getting tension on it. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this guy, this is the original one, and I'm adding this to it. Let's pretend it's going the whole length here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off around here. Uh, and then I'll just turn the whole piece down. And then what I can do then is just cut it to the right size that I need it to be. Uh, when it's done. And that's pretty like, I think that's safe. And if not, I use another bolt. So I know we said we were going to turn this in the lathe, um, but I forgot that when you have things that are go long and it's just, it just flexes too much. And so we're going to do this the right way. And we're going to use a drill, a Harbor Freight Perfection 
the combination sander and uh, we're gonna do it that way. All right, so I got this all set up, I think. Here's the extension, here's the rod, swink, and I can tighten it down. All right, so here's the extension. Uh, I kind of tapered the end a little bit. You can kind of see it in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this up and attack it, make sure that the uh, shaft in the middle here moves and attack it fit it inside of here make sure that it goes in easily and nothing is weird and binding and then we'll finish welding it clean it up put it in and then we can adjust everything else all right so i got this tacked up nothing serious and it will go in actually probably like this, I think. I should mark this really. But it goes in. I gotta like clean it up a bit more to make it smooth. But the good news is, is that it goes in. It comes out the other side and it engages. So I think, yeah. That's it. Turns and you can watch that adjuster not move in. That means that the clutch works. So what I need to do is I need to turn it in as far as it'll go and then put a knot, a little mark on it and I'll put a, a bracket right here coming up. And that's gonna be the next video I think. So right now I think that that's, that's gonna be it. The linkage moves, I just got to finish welding it and then clean it up, make it nice and smooth and clean so it doesn't ruin that bushing inside of there, but this is step one of a foot clutch, so I can attach it right back on here, get all this taken care of. Alright, thanks for watching this video. Uh, that was step one of this foot clutch. This is the linkage here, it's in, it works. Uh, it sticks out enough here and even though it was actually in there so I can trim it to the right length You don't need to know about how I do all that because it's really just like short. So the next video I'm gonna be attaching this and we're gonna start with The foot stuff. I think the next video about this at least we're gonna be doing the The linkage to get this bar here because I want the foot part set before we start messing with this part so See you next time, and uh, like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think. Am I doing something very, very wrong here? I don't know, because I think it's doing pretty good. It's almost done. Well, almost done. Step one is almost done. See you next time.